My first question to you actually has to deal uh, with something that's really concerning everybody around us. While we are trying to ramp up the vaccine program and we're seeing more and more vaccinations, you know, go, uh, going to increase across the country, we're also seeing variants that are spreading all across the country as well of the coronavirus, which is concerning experts. So right now in the race between getting everybody vaccinated versus the variants that are spreading all across, who is winning currently? I wouldn't uh, declare a winner right now, but I would uh, say that it's a very tight race. Um, but I, uh, you know, the bottom line is that I think the U.S. is doing a great job at increasing vaccine supply and distribution, um, especially since most states um, are now expanding um, vaccine eligibility to all adults. Um, I think we should really keep our focus on getting everyone vaccinated um, and monitor, you know, keep monitoring for variants, but there's very little that we can do to control the variants at this time. So I think we should really keep our focus on trying to get all eligible um, adults vaccinated right now. Right, and uh, Dr. Agarwal, experts are also worried about a potential surge of COVID-19 Due to these variants and loosening of some restrictions in some states, what are your comments? So another surge is always a possibility, um, depending on what's going on. Um, but with more and more people getting vaccinated, I do think that the people with severe disease um, is going to go down. Um, you know, we may have to increase restrictions depending on what happens. But, um, you know, because of all the tools that we have at our disposal at this time, um, I think that we are, you know, in pretty good shape to not have to go into a full lockdown like we did in the first wave. Right. So that uh, fear is a little less because a lot of European nations have gone under lockdown. What are the chances that New York City could be in under lockdown again? <sighs> Um, again, I don't think that we'll be ha we'll have to go into a full lockdown mm -hmm. as previous, but I think that we may have to go back to increasing some of the restrictions. Um, you know, a lot of the restrictions have been loosened at this point as far as opening gyms and indoor dining, um, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, where high school students are going back to school and all of those types of things. So, so we may have to backtrack on some of those, but I really don't anticipate that we would have to go into the full lockdown like we did in the spring of last year. Well, that's very, uh, you know, good to hear coming from a doctor. You know, when yeah. you're looking at this surge, uh, Dr. Agarwal, um, experts are also saying, and they've been saying that young people are kind of uh, responsible for this current surge. Um, we talked about the spring breakers as well. Um, what are your comments on this? How are you looking at it? it is, like, is it the young people that are causing this current surge? It does appear that it's the young people and it makes sense that it would be because they are the ones that have not yet had the opportunity to get vaccinated, um, you know, uh, like older people have. So the vaccination has really only come available to them in the last week or two. Um, so it does make sense that they would be the ones that are uh, causing, you know, the latest surge. Um, also, you know, I think that the spring holiday, you know, spring break travel and all of those things um, are also contributing. Right, and these variants, Doctor, there's one from the UK, one from Brazil, South Africa, and then there's one from New York. Uh, what could you give us, you know, a little bit more information on this? And how dangerous are these variants looking for you? So I, we don't have complete information about all of these variants at this time. We do think that, you know, these variants are definitely here in the United States. Um, so they're they're present and, and they are more transmissible than some of the other um, variants. Uh, I mean, sorry, the original, you know, coronavirus that we had. So, uh, so the question is, you know, is there going to be decreased vaccine efficacy against these variants? Um, and, you know, how virulent are they? Are they more virulent and are they more transmissible? So I think those are really the main concerns um, around these variants. But, you know, all of vaccine, uh, all viruses mutate. And so this is not an unexpected, you know, development. Um, but it just depends on how dangerous these variants are. So the three vaccines that we have going on from Johnson & Johnson, Moderna and Pfizer, are they effective against some of the variants, if not all? So I think that they are effective. It's the degree of efficacy. That's the question. So I think that they all should 
have some degree of efficacy. It just depends on, um, you know, how effective. I think that we have seen that um, the Johnson Johnson vaccine is is a little bit less effective against the South African variant. So I think that we do have concerns um, that, you know, all of the vaccines may be less effective against the South African variant. And you just mentioned Johnson & Johnson, and my next question is actually about it. Um, doctor, we are seeing people concerned about the fact that it's just a single dose, um, you know, COVID-19 vaccine with an efficacy, which is a lot lower in comparison to Pfizer and Moderna. How do we raise more awareness about this in the community? And, you know, how are you looking at Johnson & Johnson? Is it as effective against the coronavirus as the other two? So it's not as effective, you know, the efficacy is around 66%. But, you know, I think that because the Moderna and uh, Pfizer vaccines were so incredibly infected, uh, effective, um, our expectations now are a little bit misaligned. So usually for vaccines, we think that, you know, over 50% efficacy is actually pretty good for them. Um, and so the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is certainly um, meets you know, that criteria and is above that threshold. Um, I also think that uh, because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine you know, did some of its clinical trials in South Africa and that variant was uh, present there, I think that the efficacy numbers overall were a little bit lower for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, but I do, I would encourage people to get it. I think that um, the fact that it is only one dose is terrific um, because th there's much less coordination that is needed um, and you should be, you know, fully vaccinated, you know, after a few weeks of, of receiving that vaccine. So I would encourage people to uh, get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and it's always good to have more tools, you know, available um, to us to fight the COVID uh, virus. Basically, we have to just get whichever vaccine we can get and, you know, get inoculated. I think the point is to really, really uh, get everybody, um, you know, safe from this virus. Another vaccine that's been in the news, Dr. Agarwal, is the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, there have been cases of these rare blood clots that a lot of experts are worried about. And many countries have actually halted the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Do you think it'll get approved in the U.S.? Um, I'm not sure. I think that uh, that the U.S. will require some more data uh, before approving the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, I, I think that you know there there's conflicting data about whether um, you know these blood clots you know are truly related to the vaccine. Um, so I, I do think that we need more studies to determine that. Um, I think the U.S. may be a bit slower in approving this vaccine. Um, because uh, we already have three vaccines that are available um, and you know are, are effective in our population. So I don't think there's any rush in uh, you know approving a fourth vaccine. Right. And in fact, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is the leading uh, you know, person on coronavirus in the country, has actually said that we may not necessarily even need a fourth vaccine because there's enough supply now of the other three vaccines. So hopefully that goes into it. Another vaccine question I have for you concerns the children, Dr. Agarwal. How are you looking at these vaccine trials that are happening in children? And when you're looking at them, how important is it for us to get that group vaccinated to reach herd immunity? So I think it's very important to get children vaccinated um, to reach herd immunity. Um, the vaccine trials are going on in children currently. Um, and so hopefully we will have approval for uh, the children to be vaccinated, um, perhaps, you know, as early as the summer. And do you think we will see schools open up in the fall? I know there's a lot of conversation going on about it. 80% of school staff and child care workers have been vaccinated in the country as well. Do you see that happening? I think that schools can't, I think it's a, it's a complicated issue, but I do think that schools can safely open in the fall. Um, you know, many schools have been open for the majority of this school year as well. So I think that with the appropriate precautions and uh, the ability to test appropriately, I do think that um, schools should be able to open in the fall. But, uh, you know, again, it's it's uh, an evolving situation. And so we have to, you know, keep reevaluating um, the safety of that. So what would you tell parents right now? 
So I would tell parents right now to, um, you know, to be prepared for school opening up, but be prepared for all possibilities. So I think that, you know, just like this year, everyone had to be very flexible with, uh, you know, hybrid schedules, you know, sometimes school closing because of transmission happening. I think that we are going to have to continue in that vein, just because, um, you know, we are not out of the woods yet. You know, we haven't gotten everyone vaccinated. Uh, we do have, you know, a lot of tools at our disposal now so that people are not getting um, very severe disease. But uh, the worry about, you know, transmission is still present. And um, and so I think that parents are going to have to be patient and still, um, you know, be flexible um, because we, we really don't know what's going to happen um, in the fall as of yet. Right, and when you are looking at these rates of transmission, another question I have for you deals with air travel. Do you think it is safe right now? I know the uh, the air uh, airlines are making their best effort, giving their best in their uh, you know capacity to make sure they're following all protocols. But when you're just looking at it as a point of uh, being an epidemiologist, is it safe? I think that air travel can be done safely. Um, a lot of the airlines are actually reducing their their restrictions now, and they're no longer blocking mi middle seats. I think you know, as of I think some of them have already stopped blocking middle seats, and and uh, most of them are going to discontinue those safety precautions. Um, I think that if you've been vaccinated and that you're a pretty low risk, that you can um, travel safely uh, by air. Um, you know, you do have to continue social distancing as best that you can. You know, it's very difficult in the airplane, um, but, you know, definitely wear your mask, you know, during your flight. Um, I think that if you are um, high risk, unvaccinated, I would still discourage um, air travel, um, you know, if it's if it's not absolutely essential. Right. And just talking about loosening restrictions, doctor, there are many states like the state of Texas that have basically opened up their entire state. They're not even mandating the mask mandate, which is so important to make sure the spread of the virus is like limited. Um, what's your advice to these states? Do you think it's a wise decision to do this right now? I, I don't think it's a wise decision. Um, you know, I think that is still important um, for us not to completely let our guards down. You know, I think that, um, you know, we've seen in other countries when you do let your guard down completely that, you know, they experience another surge. So I think it is important, um, especially when you're indoors with people not in your household to continue wearing a mask, even if you are vaccinated. Um, so, uh, so I think, you know, that it's not really Really wise to just you know just eliminate all the mask mandates just a few questions left here for you dr agarwal what's your biggest fear right now i think my biggest fear right now is that people are letting their guard down too fast um uh you know everyone is experiencing pandemic fatigue um you know i think everyone is anxious to you know get back to normalcy and um to just, you know, enjoy the weather um, now that it's getting better. And, you know, I think that it's a great idea to really spend time um, outdoors as much as possible. But I think my biggest fear is really that everyone is just going to let their guard down and then we're going to have another surge. Um, my, you know, other fear would be, um, you know, the variants. Um, and if the variants are really resistant to the vaccine, um, then I think that's going to cause problems as well. What's your biggest advice to the South Asian population right now when you are looking at COVID-19 and this upcoming surge? I think my advice to the South Asian population is the same advice I would have for, for everyone, which is, you know, get vaccinated as soon as you're eligible um, and don't let your guard down, especially when you're indoors with people outside of your household. Yes, for sure. And my last question to you actually deals with, uh, you know, the homeland, the motherland to many South Asians. India um, is seeing an incredible surge right now. What are your comments on that? How are you observing it? So the surge in India is quite devastating um, to watch. You know, I think, um, again, there's significant pandemic fatigue um, in India as well. Um, and so people really need to go back to social distancing and masking to decrease transmission. Um, you know, it's possible that the surge there that's occurring is due to um, you know, infections among people who were able to isolate during the first wave and now are kind of letting their guard down. 
or um, you know people who are getting reinfected because their immunity has waned at this point. Um, and the variants, you know, the, the variants are also present in India. So that, that may be uh, part of the problem as well. Um, and then lastly, I think, you know, there, India is experiencing a shortage of vaccine, uh, you know, which additionally is problematic. So, so there's a lot of factors at play, but I think that, um, you know, again, they just, uh, you know, shouldn't let their guard down. You know, everyone should really go back to um, social distancing and, you know, wearing their masks as they were and really protecting themselves from people who are not in their household. Yeah, so the key is don't let our guards down right now. It's just not the time yet. Thank you so much for your time here on ITV Gold.